Galvary, it's been a blast to get on all three of our campuses as part of this series that we're calling This We Believe. It's been so fun to see friends on the Boulder campus, on the Erie campus, and, and to be back on the Thornton campus uh, as we are looking at these core truths, these core convictions that we hold as a church. And it's more so than getting to see all of you to focus on these topics has been an utter delight. What do we believe about God? What do we believe about Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Bible? All of these things are so important to us as a church, but so important to us as people. And when we think about these, these deep topics, these heady conversations that we're having, these aren't just there so that we can delight in thinking about in, uh, these deep things or, or to just merely think uh, conceptually, like they all have a point and purpose. The Bible's very clear that as we understand more of who God is, of what he's done, of what he's doing that shapes our lives. I think in the book of Ephesians, you have three chapters that's, that's this really dense theology, this really dense understanding of who God is. And then chapter four, verse one, therefore. After hearing all of this, there's something that happens. There's something that, that is to occur. It's, it's, we don't just learn these things and that's it. Learning these things produces something in our lives. Think of the book of Romans, 11 chapters of, of some just uh, some of the most rich, encouraging, but, but hard to grasp at times, some of the most beautiful words that we have in scripture. Talk about who is this God? How are we saved by him? How were we separated? How does God relate to people in the Old Testament? How are we protected and guided by him? How does the spirit shape our lives? And then chapter 12, we get this. It says, I appeal to you, therefore. Because all that's come before, all of those 11 chapters, what do we do about it? Therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but, by, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is the good, and what is good, acceptable, and perfect. After 11 chapters, be transformed by the renewal of your mind, by this new way of thinking, by what we are focusing and learning, but this has an impact in our life. Our lives are changed. We live for this God. This is our spiritual act of worship for him. So if in these conversations, these are, these are things that are new for us, it's stretching a new part of who we are, that's okay. If we're walking out of these conversations wishing we could have talked about this part of our, our statement of faith or you know, wish we could have spent more time on this, that's okay. As long as we're remembering what the purpose, purpose of this is. As long as we're getting to that therefore. This time that we are looking at what do we believe, this renewing of our mind helps to produce a life that better reflects this God that we worship. Calvary, excited to be worshiping again alongside all of you. Whether or not I'm on your campus this week, it is a delight to know that we are joined together to worship this God that we believe in, to see our lives changed, to live this therefore out, all because of who this God is.